Hi everyone, it's Dr. Jen. Uh, good afternoon, and today we're gonna to be talking all about fever and kids, but specifically about what I call the great debate, whether to use Motrin or Tylenol, or some parents even use both. And um, you may have certain reasons why I use them, but I'm gonna give you my recommendations, tips, and advice um, about using uh, Motrin or Tylenol. And to let you know, the generic names are acetaminophen, that's Tylenol, but you can get a generic as well too, which we'll talk about. And there is also ibuprofen, which is another fever reducer, which also uh, goes by names like Motrin or Advil that you may have seen or heard or seen on the shelves as well too. So I get this question a lot posed to me, either um, in a frantic phone call from moms or dads, um, when their child is sick or when they're in the office, they say, you know, what should I give them, Motrin or Tylenol? So first of all, um, it's definitely not a one word answer from me because um, there's lots that goes into uh, knowing about fever and choosing the right um, medicine if need be. And that's really the, the answer, if, if need be. So first of all, you know, fever is not as scary as many, many parents think. It's just one of the symptoms when a child is sick. So we're not talking about newborns, we're talking about older kids, so above age three months of, of age. But um, fever, basically, you only need to bring down the temperature or help them um, feel more comfortable. That's really what you're trying to do. So you're, you're giving them a, a fever reducer if they're cranky, if they're not drinking, if they're irritable, um, if their heads hurt but it's not specifically to keep that number down to 98.6. Everyone gets freaked out that their, their child has to be 98.6. That is just one point. There's a total like, range, and really up to 100.4 uh, is when we really call it a low-grade fever. So before that, um, it's okay. And even they can have a higher temperature. It could be 101. I said, kids can be 102. If they're running around playing in my office, they don't need to have a fever reducer. It's not important uh, to bring that temperature down and keep it down. It's really giving them the medication to make them feel better and feel more comfortable so that they'll drink and they'll rest and they'll recover. So you want to treat your child, not the thermometer, not the number on the thermometer, but you really wanna treat your child. And so it's important to keep looking at them instead of keep taking the temperature over and over and getting obsessed about those numbers because when a child is sick, specifically with, with many viruses like the flu even, the temperature goes up and down and up and down and we don't need to know it every single hour. You may want to know if they have fever, but you don't need to know it all the time. So now that we know, um, if you're deciding, do you need to use a fever reducer because you don't always need to use it. So that's the most important thing to know. Um, but first of all, let's talk about um, effectiveness and safety. So both Tylenol and Motrin are been proven and been out for a really long time that they're safe and effective when used as directed. And I think that's what's really important, to use them both as directed as it says on the package. And that will really ensure safety. Um, they both are really, really are effective. Um, I have to say from my long time being a pediatrician and from some studies too, that um, the ibuprofen, Motrin or Advil, um, does seem to t tend to bring down the temperature um, a little bit sooner, a little bit quicker, and also lasts longer. We know that because of the dosage, which we're gonna talk about, or the dosing pattern of it. So oftentimes parents do like to use, and, and I agree, that giving ibuprofen, uh, Tylenol or Motrin, can, excuse me, Motrin or Advil can be advantageous because you have to give less doses, and that's often easier to give to a kid when they're struggling, right? And not feeling well. But what's really important when we're talking about efficacy also is to really make sure that they're getting the correct amount. And so you really want to use the device that comes with the medicine. So whether it's the, the cup or whether it's um, a dosing spoon, you want to make sure that you use the one that comes with it because that will be the most accurate. Um, and if you use something, for example, which you uh, may have in your kitchen, like a regular old teaspoon from the kitchen, um, that is really an inaccurate measure, right? They're made for decoration, to, to use for your coffee, uh, for, for soup, um, but they're not an accurate measure. So for example, a teaspoon, a measuring teaspoon is five milliliters, an exact measurement. Um, but a teaspoon in that you have in the kitchen, maybe two and a half, three milliliters, or it could be all the way up to seven millimeters. So you can see that really range of difference. So you may be underdosing or you may be overdosing if you just use your plain old kitchen spoon. So you wanna make sure that you use the measuring cup or um, the me a measuring device, like a measuring teaspoon or a medical uh, medicine syringe. That's the best when you're talking about children because um, they are smaller and they can be much more sensitive to medication. So you wanna really make sure you're getting the correct dose. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about length of action when we're talking about Motrin and Tylenol. 
Um, so Tylenol is dosed, you can give it up to every four hours. And for Motrin, for Motrin it's really every six to eight hours. So there's a longer interval with uh, ibuprofen, which is nice, as I said, because if you have a child that's struggling, uh, doesn't like to take medication, then it is easier, obviously, um, to give them something that lasts longer, right? And will keep them feeling more comfortable. So that's sort of a plus. And also at night too, right? If your child has fever and is going to sleep, um, it may be easier to give them something that may last throughout the night so that they won't wake up and they'll be more comfortable um, throughout the evening. So um, that's um, one reason with the difference uh, in length of the uh, two fever reducers. Now, one thing that parents seem to do, and I hear this a lot, and I'm gonna sort of dispel some of these myths, is that they want to give the medication round the clock and they want to alternate and they, they feel that they should alternate the Motrin and the Tylenol. This way they're gonna suppress and keep the temperature down. And that's what people like to say, keep the temperature down. They wanna keep it as normal as possible, that 98.6. And it's really not necessary. Um, as a pediatrician, I don't recommend doing that. It's really just not necessary. You're just giving so many doses over and over to your child. And if they're, again, feeling you know fine or they're drinking and they're watching TV, they're playing, they're talking to you, then it's not necessary to give it round the clock or one after the other. Um, the dosing, when parents do that, it's usually every three hours, they alternate um, Tylenol and Motrin, Tylenol and Motrin, and it's, again, a lot of medication. And one of the big issues is that you can make a mistake. And, and a medication mistakes um, can sort of, you know, be a, obviously a very big issue when it comes to your child. So if you are going to do it, although I don't recommend it for most cases, because I don't think it's necessary, um, is to write down the dosing, what you gave, the dose that you gave, and what time, and who gave it. Because oftentimes there's more than one caregiver, right? Your partner, your husband, the wife, um, there's different people giving the medication and it can get very confusing. So write it down and leave a note on the refrigerator or on your phone. Um, text it to other people who are caring for your child to make sure that everyone's on the same page so that you don't overdose or double dose. Um, giving too much can hurt the stomach, but obviously giving too much can be toxic as well too. Um, Motrin can be uh, toxic in, in high doses to your uh, kidneys and uh, acetaminophen, Tylenol can be uh, toxic to your liver. So you really just wanna make sure that you're giving the correct dose. And one way to be safe is to only give it when needed and don't feel like you need to give it round the clock um, to keep that temperature down. In fact, having a, a slightly elevated temperature is your, your body's way of fighting off the infection that you have. So no, we never want your child to be uncomfortable, um, but a higher body temperature, if they're feeling okay and they can tolerate that, is totally fine to do. Um, and I think parents get so scared about fever because often they think that the high temperature means they're gonna get brain damage or they're gonna seize, and that's just not correct. Um, what you're worried about if they have fever is the underlying infection, and so that's why you go to the doctor to find out what's going on. But the fever in and of itself is not dangerous, and I think that's important for parents uh, like you guys to understand, and I hope I made that clear for you. So moving on, dosing, we, I talked a little bit about it, and that's really key and important um, too, getting the right dose into your child. So one, I talked about using the right measuring device. But the other thing that is so important is know your child's weight. So right when you go to those um, well child exams or the preventative visits, make sure that you write down your child's weight so you have it. Again, you can leave it um, on a note in, on your phone or on um, a note card or, or hang it up um, on your refrigerator. You always wanna know your child's weight because all medication for children is based upon their weight. And that's the most accurate way of giving them the dosage that they need. So even on the package, sometimes it says weight and it says by their age, but really it's much more important to go by their weight, right? Because you can have two kids that are the same age and one could be 20 pounds and one could be 35 pounds and their dosage actually um, in that range would be quite different. So you wanna make sure that you know your child's weight. Um, another common mistake with dosing that I hear all the time from parents is, oh, well, they were sick, but you know, I didn't want to give them too much, so I kind of gave them only a little bit of Tylenol, because I'm always asking, when they tell me it didn't work, I'm just asking how much they gave me. Well, I didn't really give that much because I didn't want to over-medicate them. So here's the tip. If you are going to give your child medicine, give them the correct amount. Give them the, otherwise it won't work. So you're sort of giving them medication, and it's sort of pointless, because it's not going to work at all if they don't get enough um, for it to be efficacious. So if you're going to give it, give the full prescribed dose. That's really important. So make sure that you know what it is. If you have questions or concerns, um, speak to your pediatrician, but always give the full amount um, or it's not worth giving it at all because it's not going to help. So let's talk a little bit um, about the pros and cons of both uh, and the differences. 
um, and the similarities between uh, Tylenol and Motrin. So to begin with, Tylenol, you can administer, as I said, up to every four hours. Now you don't have to give it every four hours if your child's feeling well, but you can give it up to every four hours. Um, it's, you can also use it in infants. I don't recommend giving it to infants without speaking with your pediatrician first, because we don't want to mask any underlying symptoms, but it can be used in uh, young children under the age of six months of age. And um, what's nice about Tylenol or acetaminophen is that um, it comes not only oral and liquid for kids to take, but it also comes in suppository. And that can be really, really helpful if your child is really sick, um, if they're vomiting, if they just won't take anything by mouth, that you can give us a, a rectal suppository um, and help them feel better. So that's sort of a nice perk when necessary for um, acetaminophen. And um, you also do have to remember, as I already stated, that Tylenol can be toxic to your liver. So it's important to make sure that you're using the correct dose. But I just tell parents, if you are giving the correct dose and staying within the range, you have nothing to worry about. It's only um, if you overdose, if you're giving a lot more than you're supposed to be giving. And um, really when they, often the most common um, medication errors with Tylenol are accidental overdoses. So make sure that you always um, keep and store medicine away from kids, high up where they can't get it. You know, it tastes like candy, it's grape or bubble gum, cherry, it tastes good, so they may want it to eat it. So you wanna make sure that the lid is closed tight and securely and that you put it in a cabinet um, away where ch children can't reach and think that it's candy or want to drink it. So that's um, a, a bit about Tylenol. Now Motrin, on the other hand, um, is also comes liquid, it comes chewable as well. Actually, I left that out for Tylenol, but that can also, for older kids, come in a chewable form as well. And um, Motrin, you can give every six to eight hours. So again, you can space it out um, more so you don't have to give as many doses. And again, for a kid that struggles, who really is spitting it out and doesn't want to take it and doesn't like it, it it's, is a lot easier for parents if you don't, don't have to give it as many times a day and they're still, it still is um, effective and it makes them feel better. So that's really important too. Um, it can be toxic to your kidneys if you're taking too much. Uh, so again, stay within the guidelines, but also um, it is for indicated for children six months and above. So not for those really young kids um, and infants. And also uh, need to remember that it can be irritating to your stomach. So it's important if you're your child is vomiting a lot or that they won't eat or they're not drinking well, that you may want to stay clear of the ibuprofen because it can be much more irritating and in severe cases, if taken a lot, um, can cause GI bleeding and uh, really bad uh, stomach upset as well too. So um, those are really the differences. Oh, and in addition, though they both are, are great for fever um, and work for pain, ibuprofen or Motrin Advil has anti-inflammatory properties. So again, for sports injuries or things like um, muscle sprains and strains, it can work really well for that as well too because of, it has this extra anti-inflammatory property in it as well too. So as you see, they both are very effective, Tylenol and Motrin. As I said, oftentimes it's what you have in your, your uh, cupboard or your cabinet at home when your child is sick is usually what you're going to use. They both can be super effective in helping your child feel better, um, but I think the other underlying reason that I'm gonna say um, often what parents use is really what tastes better and what your child likes. So it's really obviously up to them, right? If they only like the um, bubblegum flavor, then they may choose one over the other. If they like the chewables of one versus the other, then that may be a reason as well too. And again, either one is fine. I'm okay with either one in most instances, um, whatever works best for your family. So I hope that made some uh, clarification around fever and what to choose, Motrin or Tylenol. Um, make sure that you know your child's weight, which is really important. Use the measuring device that it comes with. Um, keep accurate uh, notes and logs about when you gave it so you uh, won't give too much. And probably stick to the one that is most palatable to your child. It'll be the easiest way to get it into them. I'm Dr. Jen with What's Up Wednesday and leave me comments and questions below and I'll answer them, anything to do with fever. I'm Dr. Jen, see you next week.